common driveway on Florence Road from May 26, 2001, as advertised. Uh, it's not. It wasn't advertised as for an administrative amendment, basically, okay. just to extend the time in which you need to substantially start a project. Um, so what's happened is that this project was approved going back to 2007. It was a common driveway, and I did bring tiny copies. If you want to just refresh your memory, it's kind of near the intersection of Old Wilson Road and, and Florence Road. Um, but so. The way the zoning has always been interpreted is that um, common, that driveways that line up um, exactly across from streets don't need to meet the 50-foot offset requirement. And in this case, um, that, so the applicant um, is got, here tonight. We got two different ones. Is that yeah, that's OK. It's just showing you the land. It's just to oh, okay. remember this project. Oh, and if you weren't there, it's right here. Oh, OK. Um, so, um, basically the, the applicant was ready to move forward on construction and Ned Huntley reviewed it and is holding fast to the zoning ordinance which says you have to be 50, the driveway inter has to be 50 feet offset from an intersecting curb line of a street. And as you can see here, this is Autumn Drive, it's directly lined up when it came through for site plan approval, DPW reviewed it, everybody reviewed it. And it's common practice that we allow driveways to be that's a safe place to put them right across from streets. But if they're not, then they have to be at least 50 feet off. In this case, um, I mean, Cole Morgan went through. It's right across from Village Hill Road. You've got um, Beaver Brook, which is not technically a street. is a sort of an extension of Chestnut um, Street. So there's lots of examples of um, the city approving these. but. And then I feel strongly that the zoning language has to reflect the practice. So he doesn't want to issue the driveway curb cut permit to build that until the zoning changes. So the applicant is sort of stuck in this middle place. So um, wanted to come back to get an extension of time to start the project. What you'll see coming out of city council next week is a proposed zoning amendment that just merely states what the practice has been is that if a driveway isn't lined up exactly across from the street then we need to meet the standard um, so we've already submitted that um, to city council to be considered as an ordinance change and Ned is fine with that but he just wants the language on the books before he approves it so this request in front of you is just to allow an extension of time and if you remember the police station came before you for the same thing and we have the jurisdiction to do that so um, that's why it's here you guys all know where this is? You guys remember where this is? So you go out 66 and take a look at the light at the field on the left. And you can actually see, if you drive by it, you can see where it looks like it's been creased down where the road's going to be right across from the road. Uh, is there, you want to delay to a certain time? Or are we saying six months or are we just saying indefinite? Uh, well, you, you know, the typical period is two years. You could either say just extend it two years. The expiration date was going to be August 26, uh, 2011, so in a few weeks. Or you could put a year on it, whatever you felt, or, or six months, but a year might be more, need more flexibility since we're getting into, you know, depending on when council finally adopts the ordinance, it might be past the plans, it may not be open. So um, you might do, I would suggest at least a year. Any questions on this? Uh, anybody for the public here to speak to this issue? Just introduce yourself. Me, I'm John Young, the applicant. Yeah, I um, yeah, really don't have much to say on it. Um, would like a year, as for the reasons that uh, Carolyn stated. Um, what we said, I guess it may take as, as long as November to get the wording changed on it, so it's too late to, to do anything. So six months would put us right in the middle of the year. So. Who's asking for a year? You prefer a year. Okay. Looking for a year. Um, uh, that's it. That's all I have for request. Great. All right. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? 
So this is going to go to the city council, which means what, Carolyn's going to come back to us? Yeah, there'll be a hearing. public hearing probably September 8th is sort of the target date we've scheduled for joint public hearing yep. on the King Street package. Yep. So we'll probably just put this on the same agenda. Okay. It's going to be a long way. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Brad, yeah, I have a question. Is there another avenue to approach to, to get this done by the ZDA person? No. It doesn't really qualify for oh, the ad hoc zoning thing is kind of crazy time consuming there. Okay. Yeah, at least it'll be hmm? at least it'll be very clear from now on. I mean, yeah. It's something it's something we right. want to do, but I don't think the zoning ever was explicitly specified. The zoning review commission would have taken <laughs> care of it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, um, I move we give him two years. We'll give him two years or one year? He's only asking for one. Two would be better. Five. <laughs> oh, no, no, two. I'll second. All right, so, uh, I mean, I'll accept an amendment if you want. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's close the public hearing, then they can make the motion. Oh, yeah, I yeah, Hold on. Am I too late? I do have one question. If, if this is approved, uh, the extension, um, so I'm assuming it, I have to wait until the wording is changed officially by ZBA. Well, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it's not a planning board issue. It's whether or not Ned would be willing to grant the permit. Right. Um, does he have the authority? Yeah, he, he's by? the one who issues the curb cuts. But all we're doing is extending it until we can work sure. this issue out. Yep. So it's still up. The same process will happen. That has to do with it after the city council votes. Right. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion and a second to close public hearing. All in favor? Grant. All right, Grant. Mm -hmm. You want to make a motion? I move we grant his request for extension of time. Let's see. Extension of time on a site plan approval for John Ewing Common. Driveway up of Lawrence Road from 826-2011 until 826-2013. There a second? Second. Any discussion on this one? We're going to do two years. All in favor? All right. Set. Thank, Thank you. Step one. Actually, you're done with me, right? Done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Mark. Basically, PVPC does a regional plan for uh, every, I don't know, I guess the last time they did it was, I guess it must be five years, because the last time they did it was 2007, so if you want to look at this, I'll put one on the other side too, it's two-sided. Um, so, um, basically what they ask, what they ask every time they do the plan is for the member communities, uh, I think they're 43, um, uh, the executive official, either mayors or the boards of selected people, um, a, do, a vote to enter this uh, memorandum of agreement to um, adopt the plan, essentially, the regional plan. The thing that's slightly different about this plan, I mean, a lot of, there, there are a lot of issues that are very, or um, goals and objectives that are uh, things that the city's already doing and it's consistent with um, sustainability. The one big change in this plan is they put language and they've done analysis of communities in the valley based on a hope that this change in legislation will happen in Massachusetts, that there will be reform in land use regulations. So this is all predicated on this bill that's been worked on for years and years in Massachusetts to change the rules and regulations regarding zoning and subdivision. So, um, in some ways, it's a little bit 
of the cart before the horse. In other ways, it's maybe just really optimistic and hopeful that no changes whatsoever will happen in the legislature to, to um, adjust the proposed legislation as it stands, which is su it's such sweeping language that I can't imagine, I mean, they don't be proven wrong, but I can't imagine it'll go through without any amendments. So it doesn't really have any bearing on Northampton, except the analysis in there is that in some places we're not consistent with this proposed bill. And I think we're not consistent with it because we can't be because there are things in there that are proposed that are illegal right now. And they will only be legal if the legislation changes. You get casinos in the roundhouse? Right. No. Well, now you're talking. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things is making sure that open space residential development is required for any development of more than five lots. And that's illegal now. You can't put that onus, you can't put that restriction in your zoning. Um, and so this plan says, you know, Northampton isn't quite consistent because it doesn't have this regulation. Most of the stuff we do is cluster anyway, which has that requirement. Right, but we can't require somebody to do a cluster if they can do A and R because under state law. Oh, even an A and R would have to have. <coughs> right, there would, right. That's what this would be proposing is any development of larger lots that is proposed to be more than five units has to be in an open space residential cluster type of arrangement. Um, so, you know, I think... Even like a subdivision if there's a street you'd have to, or would you... Yeah. Or would you different? Well, it's... Um, uh, subdivisions are probably different, but then as part of the subdivision, if you're doing more than five lots, and it's a large lot, what they're, what they're classifying as large lot are 40,000 square foot lots. Yeah. So if you got five of those, you have to do it in a cluster and not do. Wow, that's so. Yeah. Is that the key change, or are there other things that, as well as the open space? Here? Well, I'm going to say that. I mean, they packaged a whole section of the plan is based on meeting these um, goals, benchmarks in this proposed legislation. So it's not just the open space residential, but there are other elements in there as well. And some of the things Northampton's already doing, and others were not because you can't, because it's not legal. Um, so I, I'm just pointing that out. That if, so if, for instance, the legislation passes, then this is great. It's forward thinking. It's been adopted by all these communities, and great, we're good to go. Um, if the legislation changes, you know, PPC will probably be in the position of having to modify the plan, um, which doesn't really have any bearing on you all in terms of making the recommendation. You can still make a recommendation that the city enter into this MO, um, MOA or MOU. Is it on, on the agenda for this legislative session? What's going to happen this year? It's in process, um, but it's been in process for a number of years, but it's actually a bill now. So it's been there have been committees working on it for several years. It, it has a Senate bill number now, so it's it, and it's been assigned to a subcommittee. I can imagine there's a lot of perspective. Like there are a lot of there are a lot of significant changes, but I don't know how much buy-in you know the committees the committees have have tried to get buy-in from a lot of you know the homeowners so um, uh, home. Um, the Home Builders Association and, and other real estate interests. So there may, I don't know how much of a coalition there is um, around it, and that's really probably the key, crucial um, key point to getting it adopted. Um, anybody have any comments or questions on the MOU? Do we actually have a copy of the MOU? No. no. But maybe it's not the planning board that adopts it. It's really the mayor that has to sign it. So you all would be asked to, and in the back, the back page actually of that draft, I think the last page it describes how PUPC goes about uh, requesting agreements. I think it's one of the last couple of items. Um, and um, so it's really, they go to the executive officials of each community to sign the agreement, but to 
the extent that there are planning commissions or planning boards in each of those communities that make the recommendation, it's all the better. Do you think this is going to cause a lot of change to ourselves? Yes. Because no. we're already doing a, a, a lot of these things. There are some things, I think no matter what, I think if the land use reform passes, it will give Northampton a lot of flexibility to do things that we've talked about wanting to do for a long time. Um, so in that regard, it will enable the city to do the things. And then we would be consistent with the outlines that are um, identified in the plan. Um, but it's, so I don't think it's contrary to anything the city would, would want to do or inconsistent with the sustainable work. Yeah, I was just wondering, so you're asking us to approve this as a proposal that we would get behind if the legislation goes through, is that? Well, not if the legislation, this is PBPC's document. Okay. They're asking all the community to adopt it as is. So what um, they've asked us is to, and, and we would recommend that the city um, adopt it as the regional, as a member community of the regional planning agency. Even so, though there are certain things that are inconsistent with our current zone ordinance. Yeah, because they're inconsistent with everybody's zoning ordinance because they're not allowed. Um, so do we adopt it with, with the kind of a caveat that given these inconsistencies, we still support it as an idea? Is that yeah, I mean, I think, and as you read, let me just see if I can find the language to show well, but you. Well, it doesn't have to force the zone. We're just adopting yeah. it. It doesn't, it's the re You're adopting it as a regional plan, and what the, it's the goals within the regional plan. So you can make that, um, you, you would make that recommendation to the mayor that you think this is a good planning document and it's a good, has good regional goals. And um, they're just, I mean, they're very, most, all these goals, if you look at all the goals, they're certainly all consistent with sustainable North right. I was really more pointing out the fact that they have this whole section on um, consistency with the Land Use Reform Partnership Act, and then what things would come into play if that act passes. And I think they're all good and valuable. It's just that they're, they're anticipating something that hasn't happened yet. So in essence, you'd be agreeing to the plan that would be anticipating that all these great things will so they'd be up and running. Yeah, exactly. If, if that legislation goes through, everything will be in place to yeah. take off. Yeah. Are there any oh, parts? Sorry, Mark, on track. Um, what about approval not required? Is there a chance of getting rid of that in part of this? Um, Seems to me I recall something about Well, the, it is, it, especially, there are probably two ways. One is the whole requirement for cluster, that you essentially get four A&R lots, and that's it. You can't do ten, you know. Um, but I have to, the latest version, I didn't brush up on the latest version and what it says about A&R, so I can quickly go through and figure it out. Um, but yes, that was part of the discussion early on. Um, let me just see if I can find it in here. What if there's a place in town where you do five A&Rs? Pardon? Is there a place in town right now where you could do five without having to put in a road or do a cluster? You know, do we have? Well, a and R means you've got the frontage, the roads there. Yeah, A&R essentially means that we have no control over it. Right, right. It, it means, means all the... It right. means everything. Yeah. Um, and it, it seemed to me that that's something that no other state has. So I think. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it says right here that um, basically you um, it would replace and it provide an option for towns and cities to replace A and R with a different category of subdivision. So instead of having subdivisions for creation of new roads, maybe there would be a different, like a minor, they're calling it a minor subdivision, that would still require review, but um, it wouldn't be that 
maybe it wouldn't be the same review as full blown subdivision. So right now, you know, there's no review at all. There's no site plan. There's nothing. And this would suggest that um, you would have to come through for review. And if I could find five eight and lots in a row, I could do two of them, and then I could do three of them, as long as I don't do all five at the same time. Right. I was going to say, so we're being asked to adopt a plan because we think it's a good regional plan that's consistent with the overall sustainability plan, even though it's not consistent with current legislation. Does that imply that parts of the current sustainability plan aren't consistent with current legislation? So that if this plan is ultimately adopted, is it going to be different than the sustainability plan? Well... No, I mean there's certain there are things that the sustainability plan is so broad. Um, there are things in the legislation, proposed legislation, that would allow us to do more with our sustainability plan than we could do now in terms of implementation. So our plan is really just goals and policies, and that's what this is. It's just that there's another step that in this proposed land use reform, there's a process by which you submit your each town submits their plan to the regional agency, and the regional agency evaluates the plan. Right now, we don't have to do that. Our plan is our plan. Nobody anywhere else says, oh, wait a second, you're not consistent with Amherst and all the other communities. Right. So that would be different. But um, I wouldn't say that the proposed legislation then would sort of um, make invalidate our sustainability. Andrew, is that a stretch? Or no, so it's just, it's just a stretch. Yep. So what you're saying, I mean, because I haven't read it, I have to say, is that in there there's a component that has to do with collaborating with um, the other communities in the valley. More, right, but through the regional agencies. They're, so through, through PVPC. PVPC. Right. And that PVPC would be sort of the arbiter and look the at all the, right. yeah, all the plans. And then if you are consistent, it, it would enable you to have special status for either getting funding or doing other projects or getting preferred for status. For collaborative grants? Um, yeah, potentially. What's up? I mean, it was a whole, it's a whole focus on creating partnerships with communities as opposed to each individual community going off on their own and doing their own thing. It was interesting to look at some of the stats that are in there. You know, mm -hmm. one was interesting is like the nine percent decrease in elementary school yeah, population, so. yeah. and the other was we'd have a decrease in population if it wasn't for immigration, which was also interesting. Uh, yeah. But that was, in fact, we still have a decrease in population, even accounting with the, 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 the population in the area is going down. Are there any members of the PVPC who have not adopted this plan? Well, you know, they just finished. This is sort of hot off the press. Okay. So it's all been distributed to all the communities now. So it's hard to know. Or the last one, it was updated last time, four or five um, years ago. Were there? Yeah, I think there's a stat in here about that, actually. It said that three. Yeah, something. Is that what you saw? Yeah. It didn't say which ones. Then. <laughs> they were at three out of 43. They were hoping, Did they didn't it. want to finger point because they wanted them to pull them Right, right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that shaving sometimes works, too. It was also interesting to see North Hampton decrease in population. Yeah. Yeah, is that interesting? Well, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not something, I mean, I'm part of this, but interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's a, probably I live in a town that people want to live in, but it's not. Nope. There's a town that people can't afford to live in. It's all rich retirees. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, well, so, are you, we don't need a, we need a vote to accept yeah. this or no? No, you want to, you want to make a recommendation to the mayor, basically. We recommend that the city adopt, um, or sign the memorandum. And it, it does it obligate us, I mean, I guess I'm still curious about, uh, I know the state law trumps our zoning. So, say this bill passes, is it going to require an overhaul of the zoning or just the zoning automatically that conflicts uh, our zoning, any zoning we have that would conflict with state law is just null and void? 
or are we, are we going to have? Yeah, to I mean, there's certain things. So there, there are vested rights issues, and there are other things that we've sort of long held as being, you know, like grandfathering. Things like that might change, and so we might have to alter the way we operate, um, and we might have to make some adjustments to the zoning because some of the new rules might invalidate yeah. some of the things we've done based on the old rules. Right. This, this isn't a, a law or this is no. right. so somebody's going to have to write something to put any of these into effect so I doubt if they're going to just take this and translate it into a law. Well I'm thinking so it's like two pieces though it's like there's this yeah. but there's this pending legislation which this doesn't isn't the same as. So yeah so I guess what my, my thought is you know we're Kind of saying, yeah, this is okay, but in six months or twelve months, whenever this bill gets passed, if it gets passed at all, we may. Well, have I to think this is going to be no, adopted piecemeal. It's going to be adopted piecemeal, isn't it? Well, I mean, and so here's what I think would happen. Let's say the legislation passes and it's good to go, ready to roll. Let's say, let's say it dies a fiery death. <laughs> then, I mean, they could probably just go back and amend, easily amend the plan and say, well, we have to extract all this stuff about, you know, the Land Use Reform Act because it went down in flames. Right, but this itself doesn't hold us to anything. No, no. This has some good, good stuff in it. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing about the eight-year grandfather right, for some clause, reason. they want to reduce it to four. It's a terrific idea. Some of the stuff is just ridiculous. Yeah, all the vested rights stuff is yeah, part of the reform, proposed reform. Okay. So, I mean, I think we got to say that we agree with the in principle and what about that. I'm recommending the mayor sign the MOU. I'm right about it. Yep. Isn't that what we're trying to do? Yeah. Well, so, yeah, that's yeah. the, I mean, we could vote yes. We recommend it to the mayor. We could vote no. We don't recommend it or as any of it take no stance on it whatsoever. So it seems people are pretty much in favor of it. So should we, do we need a motion? I suppose we should have a motion. I move that the, that the planning board recommend that the mayor sign this, the MOU, with regard to the PPC plan. Uh, second, second. 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 All in favor? Chickens. <laughs> well, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> so number three, discussion of sustainable Northampton implementation priorities, ZRC items, chicken, home occupation, other planned OPD items, cluster map changes. Uh, we're going to change Florence, I guess. Um, that, yeah, that was sort of a note to me. Uh, I thought we were going to rename it NoHo. <laughs> <laughs> is sort of to get you guys thinking about what your next what your next priorities are. I mean you got the report from Zoning Revisions Committee. There were you know two more fleshed out items than anything else, the chickens and the home business thing. Um, and then there were a bunch of other things that they um, recommended, particularly around residential um, districts. All of, I mean those things need to be fleshed out more, and then you have sort of the work plan that's all the items that potentially could, you could, you know, prioritize or reprioritize based on what you think are either low-hanging fruit or lower-hanging fruit or important. Um, and so it's really sort of, it's meant to be a discussion about what you guys think you want to tackle next after this, you know, we get through the series we presented the whole institutional change thing at the last meeting and some other um, zoning that you asked staff to move forward on. So sort of this would be the next wave. What do you want to work on? Do you want to handle residential districts? Do you want to look at um, cluster in particular or um, 
business, chicken. I mean, I would say the chicken thing, although it's simple, there really hasn't been any vetting to the greater public. It's really only about chicken advocates who have said, yeah, we want flour, sounds good, let's go. So, you know, I don't know how people feel about being surrounded by 12 chickens on all sides. <laughs> Well, we could, I mean, the think about the, we could start with the chicken one, it was pretty simple. Um, well, well, the simple, simple in terms of the write up. Oh. It, it was a lot of discussion um, that went into it. But the thing that. Um, How was it identified as a priority? You know? uh, at the first or second, very first or second meeting of the NRC, Lily Lombard came to the, uh, the urban agriculturalist. Mm -hmm. And it was, there was a lot of ideas thrown around. But one of the ones that had the most traction was chickens. Uh, and that traction was with, with the board and with simple. You know, th there were various ideas going around, such as um, one of them I thought was interesting was being able to keep larger livestock, goats, piggy goats, other ones on your land, but then being able to walk them to other parts of town so they could graze and kind of these mute moving or commuting animals. But um, the chicken one was seemed like the simplest one that most people would really do. Plus other towns around us, I think Amherst most recently, mm -hmm. Hadley, yeah. uh, somebody else just did it. East Hampton. East Hampton. There's a lot of towns around here that have adopted very similar ordinances to this, so uh, that was one of the terms. But there was a lot of discussion about it. One of the things we talked about a lot was um, you know, one of the provisions, E, is on-site slaughtering is prohibited. But then there's also culling. I'm not sure what, how we ever just differentiate slaughter from culling. So if you somehow do have too many, or how do you cull them? Lots of roosters and no hens. Right. Because what you do, what was interesting that I didn't realize is when you get chicks, when you order chicks, the, the gender of the chick is not known at the time you get them. So you can order a dozen chicks, and you can turn out to have six roosters and six hens. Mm -hmm. But the, the rule is you only get 12 hens. So if you get six roosters, what do you do with them? So eat them. Eat them. <laughs> it says you do with cash. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but there was a lot of there were very in town there were lots of strong advocates in favor of. Increasing. I think the rule right now, Carolyn, is right. It's three. You can have right. three. Mm -hmm. So this is really just an increase from three to nine. Yeah, but I mean, practical matters, people don't follow that. My neighbors, for example, did not follow that. I, I can't hear any people. <laughs> what did you say? It, it's not enforced that I'm aware of. Oh, well, that. Or follow. That could be. There's a lot of stuff. Oh, it is. Well, I think it becomes enforced when it causes an issue. So if you right. called Louie sure. and said, hey, my neighbor got 12 chickens, Louie would have to enforce it. Right. But, and that's where it's so. And maybe that makes people far more compliant. They're much more aware that if they, they do do it wrong, I think pretty much there's been a, people feel like three is too few. I don't think we've had the broader discussion to say 12 is perfect. That's how we have, how we have, where did 12 come from? 12, seems like a lot to 12 is too many. Yeah, that seems like, like a lot to me. It's like the X coming at 12, so. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, there we, were, we were driving through Savoy or someplace up there, and, and there's a little sign that said, this is a right to farm community. I saw but, that sign. And it, you know, it made me think of this. What does that mean? What does it mean? I, I think it's like ash. It's so I don't know what it means either. I didn't stop and ask, but I assume it means maybe you can have 12 chickens. Right? And ducklings. Yeah, so I mean, I think the thing about this was, it, 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 we talked about it for a long time in the ZRC. We took a long time hammering out what we thought were enforceable rules. I mean, at some point, one point, the rules were, you had to inform the board health. If you had them, there was a lot of discussion about how far the runs could be away from your property. Um, so there was a lot of discussion back and forth on this. Composting. Composting. And so uh, I think, I mean, I can see a lot of the neighbors um, complaining. But I, I think the road. issue is if you want to take it up, I would say, you know, that's fine if you want to take it up. But taking it up means that the board needs to do outreach because. Right. That hasn't been had. Right. That hasn't happened. It's only there's only been outreach to the advocates. Um, and are they the ones that suggested well? Was that how they I wasn't yeah. on the. Was it? Uh, was it the? Was yeah, I mean, there was a lot. Some people suggested fifteen, and, and they sort of 
came to 12 as the number. That, you know, three was definitely too few. But beyond the people who have a very strong interest, um, it hasn't. There's been this. So outreach would involve open meetings? Yeah, or? neighborhood meetings or maybe a couple of big public <laughs> forums. I'm just wondering, like, is there, <laughs> is this how we want to prioritize? I mean, that's, this is a potential, a lot of work for someone to, you know, have all these public meetings and forums and to run them and get feedback. Yeah, I mean, the CRC did do it. It was, it was funny that we didn't, you know, uh, I'm not sure how we didn't end up doing this in one of the many public forums we've had in the last two years. Why the chickens didn't? Because the chickens, they weren't ripe yet. <laughs> they weren't ready to do. <laughs> they hadn't settled on a number. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess that's a good question. I mean, we could, I mean, we haven't been overwhelmed with permits lately. Mm -hmm. We could have the public meeting here mm -hmm. and invite various groups to it here so we can do it as part of the normal Thursday night rather than. Having to say go for civic center or right. you know, various places you've had. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean you necessarily have to do a lot. I think you probably just want to think about, you know, target key people who can then spread the word that this forum is happening. Mm -hmm. right. Get the newspaper, you know, yeah. before it become before you introduce it as an ordinance. Right. But I think the number, the, the question for us will be the number, noise, mm -hmm. setbacks. Runoff, okay. disposal of waste. the waste products that the chickens create. Uh, chicken poop. Chicken poop. Yeah. Um, no, it's just otherwise known. Additional chicks don't count toward the total. At what age does a chick become a chicken? That's good. That's another good question. I think it says six, I think it's six months. Oh, it's it's only what bill so far. <laughs> well, the thing is, since you can't have roosters, this is hens only, so right. you shouldn't be, I mean, this is not oh. to create a farm, but. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the idea is hens are quiet, roosters are loud. Um, Do they know that? The chickens? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that they're totally quiet. <laughs> they all smell. Yeah, I mean, odor is a major issue. Well, the other thing we might want to do, Carolyn, when we do this, is just compare what we have to what other hammers have. Yeah. I mean, again, yeah, yeah, we're not going to see who any of they prepare. If other if East Hampton animals has. Chicken. Because no, that, that happened kind of after we. I think they, are, they maybe compared it to Greenfield or something. Because I think Greenfield allows 12 or something like that. Yeah. They've looked at one or two other communities. And I can't remember. Did Amherst do 12? Did that I think Amherst did 12. Was? Really? Yeah, I think East Hampton did 12. Well, 12 is a pretty common number. number. But yeah. I don't know either. I think the 12 might be in certain districts too. Whereas this one is just sort of citywide. City -wide. City -wide. That's actually a good question. Do we want to have right. like the URA, B, and C? Right. It's a smaller number than. We're all in other you, you started by saying this is going to be easy. Well, no, I said it's short. Short. Where do we get the home office? That's yeah. all right. So central business, they could have outside their storefront. They could have some chicken. Oh, oh, that's that's four, three ducks out front. You guys yeah, should have done the DRC. Yeah. And the bid's going to clean up. Well. Yeah, right. That's right. That's what you're going to do. That's what your bid dollars are going to go towards. <laughs> chicken up eggs. And right. No more Christmas lights. There, there could be a great uh, anti-chicken outbursts, you know, people from the anti-chicken element. Oh, I'm sure we're putting photovoltaics on the landfill or something. Right. Um, but it is different. I mean, like, where we live, I, I mean, my neighbor's chickens were totally fine, but we're really close, yeah. you know. It's yeah. In fact, the rules on this, I mean, uh, was number C. The poop shall be located at least four feet from property boundaries, and no poop can be set close to twenty than twenty feet to an existing residential structure on an abutting parcel. My old house, you couldn't put it in. There's no mean. way you could put a poop on my old yard. Oh, see, and that's interesting. Because that I means that the houses, yeah, you, if you, the houses are at least forty feet apart, feet. you can't put a poop in. I'm not good at spatial things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You tell me, you you know. I mean, if it's near, I wouldn't house. think so. Yeah. I, so are you th are you thinking that they wouldn't be able to do it? They would not. Who would be? My old neighbors who had three chickens, who had more than three chickens. Oh. Wouldn't yeah, they so be able to do it on the railroad tracks? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ouch. Ouch. So that's how you. That's how you call them. <laughs> yeah, okay. so that means that somebody that now legally has three chickens yeah. might, right. might be illegal to have three chickens after this. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Yep. I mean, yeah. I would like that to happen. Is there a grandfathering clause here? And what if they? And if they die, do they? Are they new? Replace them. 
same book group. <laughs> This is worse than saying capons are allowed. Yeah. What's a capon? Exactly. I had to Google it. Exactly. It's a chicken. It's about this big. No, it's not a chicken. It's a male. Gilded. Yeah, it's a gilded male chicken. Pull it. I thought it was something. What do we call it? Pull it. Capon. That's a capon. What's a pull it then? Small. Uh, this is why we're not going to be out of here by nine. Right. right. Oh, no. yeah, no. oh, okay. I know. We're going to figure out what we're going to do with the text. Let's decide on maybe having an open forum on chickens in October. Uh, so we have two meetings in September. We have the 8th and the 22nd. The 8th is pretty busy because we're going to have King Street. Uh, do we have any permits? Yeah, we'll have pro yeah, we have Kensington Estates. Continue. Oh, with one from the road now. Yeah. Are they coming back? Are they, have you heard any indication that they're going to be ready? Oh, yeah. I think they're coming. I haven't seen plans, which is a little worrisome to me, but um, they are, I'm sure they're planning on coming back. We're, we're going to do another field trip up there. Oh, you should. Yeah, probably. Oh, I'd like that. I have no rack. I was not able to go. I haven't. Um, so the second meeting in September? It's the 22nd. And then the, for October is the 13th and the 27th. So we do 13th? Carolyn, I guess you and I can talk about how we're going to get the word out. Uh, anything else we have to do? Was there any discussion of the fact that some people would be, like people in town, would be excluded by these? No, actually, it didn't it never came up. And that's. That doesn't seem fair. The pullet is a young hen less than one year old. Oh, thank really? you. So right now, so the difference is right now. More than I. Yeah, right, you, right. Get, you get three by, you can get three chickens anywhere with no rules. No, that's because they're pets. Unless you get up to more than three, they're not pets. Right. So maybe that's part of the answer is that you at least keep the three with no distance restrictions. And then greater than three, you cross them. Does this become a commercial thing? Like people are selling eggs or selling meat, or is this? Just for family consumption. Yeah. I can imagine anybody could eat all that. It's like it's sad household pets are personal use. Right here in the actual ordinance. It's not meant to be business. It's 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 meant to so they're actually violating. Uh, it's not there. Uh, what is there? Uh, no rules. No rules. <laughs> well, somebody should write a story about this for the agricultural answer because that, you know, between now and October, something could have we could get, you know, get people informed about what this issue. Is. Yeah, I think that's no. Those are not the people we need to inform. People we need to inform are people who want to come in and say, or you know, right. I mean, you don't have to get the pro chicken people. No, but if people themselves. read it and they go, that, I think, oh my god. But an anti chicken person would not be a big cross section of the gazette. Well, so, you want to do it for the 8th? So, October 13th? Or 13th. So, October 13th, it's just the first public forum on chickens, is that what we're saying at our meeting? Yeah, and then I guess you and I could. Talk about what we're going to present, and then uh, how we're going to work. I mean, I could, I could go to the old ZRC. We had three people on ZRC who did outreach and find out how they did it. But, wow. Uh, yeah, I think, fun. yeah. I mean, their approach was to go to people who knew about chickens. And well, no, no. There was also, you know, we contacted more three, Fort Civic. Right, but we can. Bay State. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to go to them, but we also have. I mean, that's what the city councilors are for, and. The uh, Civic Association, so, you know, Republican. Can... So, are we, uh, uh, from the board's perspective, are we saying that's our priority right now between home business and chickens? That chickens are going to take the, the lead, or does that mean? Does it mean anything? Or that, well, you guys want to do home business, and so we can decide if we want to do the thirteenth part too. Because the home business one, the, the the issue there was actually we did a lot of outreach on home business. We brought it out, we had at least two forms on it. Um, we got uh, some very negative feedback on it, yeah. very positive feedback on it. Um, 
This is the one where we were, um, they demanded to know who among us. Kind yeah, of uh, was uh, uh, one city councilor demanded oh, right. to know how many people on the CRC and how many people on the planning board actually ran a home business or home office uh, to make sure there was no conflict. So we talk. Well, let's okay. Before we decide on the 13th of October, let's talk about home business. Um, Carolyn, do you want to kind of summarize? Yeah, I think the, um, the discussion really was um, revolved around expanding um, the buy right allowances for um, home businesses based on the number of trips that would be generated to a, to a person's home. Um, that were related just to that business. Um, and so allow more types, and actually not put so many restrictions on the types of home business, but really what impact does it have to the neighborhood, meaning how many cars are going to be coming and going. Um, and there was a lot of discussion about what number you know, would that be. Is it 30 vehicle round trips per week? Is it uh, is, it five, is it a daily number versus an average, weekly average? Um, and I think, you know, between the two, I guess I would say there was definitely more public input to the home business. And certainly from staff perspective, people who come, called and said, can I have this kind of home business? And um, many times the answer is no, just because it's classified as X, Y, or Z, not because it would necessarily generate any traffic, or sometimes it seems like a pretty straightforward thing. Someone wants to do, you know, teach music lessons in their home, and it's going to be twice a week. They still need to come for a permit, and so there's a lot of discussion about the some of the home businesses that may already exist that people just haven't registered because they either didn't know, or mostly because they probably didn't know about the requirements, but they seem fairly benign. So why not get those, you know, above board and Permitted and allowed. Um, so it was really sort of taking the existing language and using that as a platform and then um, amending that um, dramatically to be based more on trips. So a lot of the things that are, I'm oh, sorry, but a lot of things that are in here that are, if you look at the, the first page, home business are. Allows you to do a lot more things by right, where currently you have to do things by special permit. So, so technically, most home businesses in town require a special permit. And I don't know how many special permits you've ever seen on the planning board for a home business. I've never seen one. Well, they go to the zoning board. That's oh, they go to the zoning board. Okay. And are there a lot? Um, well, I'm trying to think of the ones this year. We've probably had two or three already. And. Some of them, the other thing I should say is over the years, the definition or the allowance has been um, incrementally adjusted. So originally, um, no medical practice and, and um, therapy practices were thrown into the, the medical category. And so we adjusted that a few years ago to allow um, massage therapy, psychotherapy, not to be sort of classified as medical. And the big issue was, you know, if you're a medical practitioner, in order to meet your needs, you typically need to see lots of patients throughout an hour, whereas other therapies are um, much more drawn out, maybe once per hour or 45 minutes or what have you. So the zoning board has granted a lot of um, psychotherapy practices, massage therapists, Reiki, all sorts of um, kinds of things in home. Um, and we've done that, the zoning board's done that this year. There have been other things like artists um, who want to have open studio in their home have come to the zoning board, even if they only want two open studios per year, that still triggers a home business. So you think of all the artists in the community that, that could probably benefit from um, not having to necessarily rent out space to do a studio if it's only during the holidays or what have you. So. There's that whole classification of people who have come for permits, but maybe a whole bunch of others who don't, because it's just like having a party in their house, and they're doing it once a year. Um, and technically, that requires a ZBA special permit. Um, but yeah, we probably get 
I don't know, between five and ten a year. And what kind of criticism did you hear of it in the public forums? Uh, as Carolyn said, a lot of it was on traffic, what determines traffic. And parking. And parking. A lot of it was on uh, noise, smell, and sight. For example, one of the things somebody said, well, what if the person is a wants to cook and they use a lot of garlic? <laughs> Am I going to be smelling garlic in my next door? What if I live in a duplex and we share a common front door? Am I going to be afraid to meet strangers in my foyer when they come to visit my neighbor in my duplex? It's not a problem. There's not a home business thing. Right? Well, that was a lot of things where <laughs> I can cook with garlic now as much as I want. I can invite people to my house, even if I'm in a duplex. A lot of it were things like that. A lot of it were uh, outdoor storage. They don't want, and it says in here, you don't need, you, you, the, basically our rule was, you shouldn't be able from the outside of the house to tell there's a business going on. You shouldn't see it, hear it, or smell it. And that was that was kind of the rule of thumb we were trying to put. As, as people said, I could do a lot of things in my house that make noise, that do want things that are unsightly in my front yard or smell. Uh, so how do you make the difference? But a lot of it was traffic and hours of operation. Uh, how about auto repair in your garage? As long as it's completely contained within the garage, as it says, you can't see it, hear it, or smell it. Uh, but like a landscape company, what, can they leave all their ladders and their mowers and all their stuff strewn about the yard? When they aren't parked on the street. When they aren't parked on the street. Uh, right. that, uh, the application we had for a dog kennel, yeah. was, was that a home business thing? Well, you know, they could have gone either way. So in that in that regard, that was a we also have a kennel um, special permit. That came to you because it was for a kennel, not a home business. But that one, I remember, was on the fence. You could either go to the zoning board, but since we already have specifically a kennel life, um, special permit, it really was better suited for planning board special permit. In terms of traffic, one of the things a lot of people were afraid of was, say, I ship a lot. And FedEx comes to my house four times a day. Or a big FedEx truck comes. You know, they can ship anything you do it. That's fair. Somebody else said, well, I could have FedEx come five times a day now because I order a lot of things on Amazon.com. So how is that different? So a lot of it is, is was trying to differentiate between what you could do as a private citizen and what you would be restricted from doing if you had actually had a business in there. Right. Uh, so those are a lot of the kind of things we talked about. Mark. So there, there was more public input on this than say the chickens, but we'd be following the same path. We would be we'd have a public forum. We'd get more input, or do we have enough public input to? Yeah, I mean, I think this is probably your judgment call. I think there was definitely more public outreach on this one. So you could, you know, pitch this forward as if you think this is a good recommendation for the Zoning Revisions Committee, you could introduce it as an ordinance and then hold the public hearing on it. Or you could decide, does it matter, even if they did have, you know, public outreach, you want to have a separate public discussion before introducing it. And, and one of the things, I mean, I know, it, you know, I've looked at this, and Carolyn looked at this for the last eight months. So for us, it's, it's fairly familiar. I'm not sure if you guys have had a chance to even, you know, I think you might not have to make a decision tonight, but I think people should become familiar with what's in here and maybe take a look at it and decide does it seem, does it seem reasonable. Um, what people were most concerned with, yes, were traffic, parking, and you know, being able to detect it. Um, there were also discussions about signs, you know, and we, yeah. we said you can't have a lighted sign as the one square foot sign, so you can't, people were worried that you can stick a big sign in your lawn. Right. And no, a sign has to be attached to the building. Uh, it can't be lit. Um, people were worried about, um, what's the word? Uh, oh, that the, the, the residence has to be occupied um, uh, Let's see, what is it? Uh, by the people who are doing business there, it has to be their residence. So it's not like you can even take a house and rent it and just go there to do work and then not live there. You actually have to work mm -hmm. in the same place that you live. But you, have a, you could have employees. You can have employees. Well, that was the whole discussion because now to have employees, it requires a special permit. Mm -hmm. But if you do it by trip generation, then yeah. you would anticipate that an employee would be oh, one of those trips. Yeah, right. two trips. And one of the ideas of that was that. Um, that by allowing employees in, a, in, a, in an 
area like, I don't know, on State Street, that the, the idea is possibly your employees would be able to walk. If you, if you allow these types of home businesses that possibly your employees would be able to walk, but they're not going to have to, or they can ride a bike, or they can get there by the, the, the TVPA, TVPA, they don't need to drive. So, um, you know, there, there, were, there are definitely some issues, you know, uh, if you've got seven trips a day, does that mean there could be seven cars parked in front of your house? Uh, so that was, you know, the neighbors, you know, people were concerned. So. But the, the motivation behind it, a lot of the motivation was, especially, you know, in towns like Northampton, where um, you know, people do telecommute, or they do want to start small businesses. You know, a lot of people said, oh, think of Google starting in a garage. You know, Apple started in a garage. You know, are we in somehow prohibiting people from starting small businesses because of this zoning we have right now? We're discouraging the kind of things that we want people to be able to do, uh, to be able to start a small business in your house without undue regulation. How, how does our zoning compare? Did, was there any comparison to other neighboring communities? I don't remember that, Carol. Or like a it similar population. Shared to other. No, but you know, I just realized I'm not sure. I was. I thought I might have um, missed something. This, this um, the ordinance that I sent you, because after that forum, I don't know. Maybe I need to read it more carefully. Maybe you guys can tell me. There was that whole big discussion about enforcement, and how would you know if it was by right? How many? employees were coming, and how many trips were being generated. So I did do a version that I think we discussed, and I don't know if that's the one in front of you, where there was sort of this administrative review, do you remember that, Steve? Um, about how to, to overcome the issue of enforcement and how many trips, you know, someone's, whose, whose burden is it to prove that you're only doing seven trips a day versus 25 trips a day? I remember the conversation, I don't remember the resolution, because how was that different than any enforcement issue. How is this different than, say, I don't know, Cole Morgan not turning their lights off for? Um, well, because, because it's by right. I mean, Cole Morgan has a permit. It went through the public process. So if this is all by right, then how would you know? How would someone know whether their neighbor had um, was following the rules and had been, had, it had been signed off on that they could do this thing? So we did um, talk about having sort of a three-layered a three system. One was sort of by right, where you don't have anybody coming. The other was an administrator, like a sign-off from the building commissioner. If you are going to have employees or have clients come to your house, then you need to prove, you need to document what your, um, what your trips are going to be. And then the third layer was if you are exceeding that many trips, then that's a special permit. So um, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't. I think that's probably not the one in front of you. Um, so I'm going to try to find that one. I don't, I don't remember see it. that one. I don't see yeah. it. Because I did put together a draft that included that, and that was to try to address, I think, what came up with the public comment of people not wanting to have the burden of ratting out their neighbors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I, uh, I can't remember it specifically. Yeah, we talked about. Yeah, this this one. This, Maybe a year ago we started. Um, well, so I guess we're going to have to look at the updated version of it. Um, this one, um, while it may not have as many open issues as chickens, uh, the issues. Well, the issues. If I had, if I had boiled down what I thought the issues were, the issues mostly resolved or revolve around traffic, right. either parking, trips. Um, for hours of operation so that you don't have traffic at 2 in the morning. And I think we, we did, this one does show hours of operation if you're outside for people in range 7.30 to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that you do need a special permit because people were worried about, you know, they don't mind traffic at noon, but they do mind it at midnight. So uh, at least that and the, as Carol mentioned, the enforcement issue. So that, to me, the, the issues were similar to what we have for a lot of permits to the traffic. But chickens, it's sort of kind of just a, lot, a little more gray area than the words for all business. Do you, do you think that um, there's been enough public discussion of this? We, don't I mean, we had another, forums. We don't need an open forum, but we could 
send it to the ordinance committee once we hear this administrative piece. Well, we could we could advertise it because we haven't vote, we're not going to vote on it tonight. Yeah. So we could advertise it for the next the meeting that we do take it up to vote on it and have have a public meeting where we can invite people to talk about it. And um, we could, but it will have a public meeting also when the ordinance committee takes it up. Oh yeah, we go to city council. They'll have a public meeting. Right. Bounce back. So how many public meeting. meetings? Well, we should probably have one before we send it on. So. I mean, it seems to me that it sort of reflects positively the whole idea of infill and it's kind of congruent with the sustainability plan to have people able to walk places and work from their homes if they want to. So to me, the, the idea of it is good. It's more this nitty gritty stuff that we want to get in place so there's not a lot of protests. But I don't know how many meetings you actually need. Right, I think we would do one before if we go on at that night. Uh, oh, Mark. I would propose we put this on the October 13th meeting as our one meeting with the intent that we're going to push it forward if we can get around the. My thing would be the enforcement. If, if you have, if your neighbor has one employee and you're trying to enforce the trip generation and you, you're, you don't want to have to have the burden to snitch on your your neighbor, you want somebody to just come in and say you're over the limit, or if they have to sign the form. What if your neighbor's got six kids and, and they're all over 16 and they're driving their friends back and forth all day and it's 10 times worse than if they just had one quiet employee. So I don't know how you can enforce one that. One kid's worse. Than yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're right. So that being said, I think it, there's been enough discussion and the ZRC presentation I thought was a good one. And it seems like we could have one meeting and get around that somehow vote on that. The chicken thing to me seems right now kind of arbitrary, the numbers, and I would I would table that until we get over this. What was the impetus for reforming the home business thing? Oh, I think all going back to sustainable North Hampton, just the idea that people um, are working more from their home and that it could cut down on impact um, you know, traffic generation for people who aren't necessarily driving off to an office or kind of work from their home maybe and see people from their home. I think there was a lot of, seemed to be a lot of support for changes to the home. I think and, and if you look at the existing the, the, the existing zoning, it's very restrictive about what you can do by right. So the other thing is there are probably a lot of these home businesses that are going on there are completely out of compliance. Yeah. That's because you can't see them, you can't smell them, they have no effect. That's a very complicated ordinance, and they're trying to cross every T, not every I, and it just seems like it's, it's a nightmare the way to interpret it. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I think, but I think the ZRC did it. I mean, they really delved into it. It was there. They felt like it was important to sustainability to what they were hearing um, through forums that people really wanted to be able to work more at home and have the option to see people. And, um, and then I just, just sort of, to go back to my earlier comment, the version you have does have the language, I just, I, for some reason I spaced it, it's in item number four, but it says that um, anyone generating you know, an average, and that should be 25 vehicle round trips, must first register with City of Northampton Building Commissioner, the nature of the business, hours of operation, and request of vehicle trips generated by the home business um, must be identified in that registration. And there was lots of back and forth discussions with Louie about whether that made sense and how he might handle it. So he was involved in the conversation too about how you sort of, you can catalog what people are doing. They still need to register, but it, it would be allowed. And that way, if someone is potentially in violation, you can go back and look at what they signed and said, this is what I'm going to be doing. And then you have a mechanism to, to check. But it does open it up to be much more by right. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah. the CBA is going to have to go through all this. Right. And the whole, the idea was too that people, the CBA, it does prevent, present a barrier for people, small businesses or people who want to practice out of their home, maybe they're trying to and particularly, I think it came up in this economic times, people have to scale back. They can't afford to pay for office space. Um, and they, but then we have, you know, two to three hundred dollar filing fees, two to three months permitting process. Um, 
to get your special permit. So it, it puts a burden on people who may not have the resources or are trying to you know, scale back because they don't have resources. Mm -hmm. Well, so Mark's point of also there. Um, two things. One, I'm confused on, on the language. On four, it says any home business by right, if you have 30 vehicle round trips, you just need to register with the city. But then it says if you have 25. Yeah, the, I, I just I noted that too, that we had gone back and forth between 30 and 25, and okay, that was so the one place just, where 25 wasn't um, changed. So, so I had that changed. Well, then, so say that first one reads 25. Mm -hmm. So it says if, if you're there by right, you have 25, you need to register. And then it says if you have 25, you need a special permit. So isn't some of that redundant, or can't you? Some of that should be condensed um, if they're both. Yeah, it's 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 excess. 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 <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, has, has, have, have, have people come up with examples of home businesses that they wanted to encourage? I mean, I think of somebody doing computer repairs that is mostly goes on road trips to do it. Um, and he's at home and he might build computers or work on them there, but he sure. doesn't have an employee or a real estate agent or, but now it looks like you're going to have small manufacturing things that people fix their cars and the rest. Well, one of the, one of, there were two things I would say. One is um, there was a concern to sort of broaden it because the current language is really seems to target more white collar jobs and so there are people who currently run contracting businesses or landscaping businesses out of their home, they might have storage, they might have employees come to meet and then go somewhere, or they might do work in their garage for, um, um, so it's it's meant to sort of broaden, um, so we're not sort of trying to, not on purpose, but by default, um, cater into one sector or another. The other thing, <laughs> one example that came up in from the ZRC was, well, um, you could pick any one of the dot-com wonders started in their house and had a bunch of kids, you know, working around at the computer, and why can't we allow that, you know, people who are... Everybody saw the social network. Yeah. Right. Um, well, Tech Cavalry. Was and Steve, here. the next Steve Jobs, and, you know, all those people started in their... Tech Cavalry started in Northampton, and now they have quite a few jobs. So they started... So there's that kind of, I think that was coming some people's frame of reference to, was to allow, you know, foster that kind of startup. Well, I think it's a great idea, and I just think we, you know, if we can move it ahead. <coughs> We're going to start yeah, chicken I was just like, I'm going to start a small chicken factory farm. So the, the, Mark, you're, you're suggesting you do it October 13th and then postpone the chicken thing? I think for the city, I think this goes more toward what we've been looking at in a global sense of trying to um, promote this type of thing. I don't know that we're trying to promote more chickens over promote more home business. So I would, I would say I vote for that for the 13th. I'd also say maybe between now and the 13th we look at ordinances at neighboring towns or cities just to see. Yeah. Is that is that a, a, a matter of course that we do that, we come up with language for whatever ordinance we're proposing <coughs> and check around just to see what other people do or are we in our own little cocoon most of the time? <laughs> well, I, I agree that we can put the chickens on the back burner. Well, why don't we do, this? Why don't we do here, why we do the 13th, we can have a public discussion about this. Yeah. And then we can also, the 13th, though, have a continuation of our discussion about chickens without necessarily having to think we're going to vote on it. Yeah, look yeah. at the different ordinances that people have done. Um, we can put it on the agenda so people can know about it, um, but we'll do some more fleshing out of the 13th of the chickens. Um, I think if we put it on the agenda, people might come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't think we want, I mean, I think we need to prepare for a lot of feedback on the home office. I think putting them together is, will make for a very long time. Well, I'm saying what I, I guess what I'm saying about the chicken thing is um, the, the, the home office we would put on with the expectation that we would vote it up or down, mm -hmm. either up to go to the city council or down. And the chicken would just be a discussion. 
how one more discussion before we're ready to have any kind of vote. We wouldn't plan on voting on it. It would just be let's look at other options that are more of an information than a discussion than a vote. So. Right, but I think if you could advertise that, it would get it. Although I thought this was this was advertised tonight. You know what? What I guess we would do is we would put we would not have a, we could we would you know I could limit it to an hour, no more than an hour on the chickens. We'll hear what people have, we'll uh -huh. talk about it, hear what people have to say, and then we'll. Uh, well, work. but if it's on your agenda, it doesn't mean you have to go and broadcast saying you want people to come to talk about it. Because if your focus is going to be home business, that's what you really want people to come and talk about. Yeah. So you might, I mean, it might be sort of if we have. Time we'll get to the chickens and figure out when the outreach meeting would be for that, as opposed to trying to invite for both. Yeah, and I guess I mean if it's on the agenda, people are going to come. You know, if they see it, they're going to come. But I think we could have a discussion of it no matter what, with the expectation that there's going to be future ones. You know, when we whenever we had a ZRC discussion. Uh, one of the things I or whoever opened the thing up told people is that any discussion we have with the ZRC is step one, of probably a 10 step process. So the ZRC was going to go to the planning board, was going to the city council, which was going to come back to the planning board. So even the, what, the idea was to make sure people didn't think that was the one and only opportunity they had to, right. to contribute to the process. And I would say the same thing that night that this is a discussion we haven't even voted on it. There's going to be more chances. So nice. this is step two. Right. This is step two. Don't feel that this is going to be all the time. There will be more opportunities. Well, I, I really think before we get to the suggesting this thing to go through, that we should try and attempt to hear from people who don't want to live next to 12 chickens. I mean, it, it, it would have a real impact on the neighborhood. I, I, you know, I think we ought to at least give people give a chance to talk about it. A chance to ask, pardon? Yeah, give them a chance. Yeah. But also make them aware that the one I happen it's the same path. But to answer, answer your question about other communities, I mean, we don't necessarily go to the surrounding communities. We try to go to, you know, broader than that. Yeah. What else? Just, what yeah. other towns in Massachusetts, around the country, whatever you for any of the ordinances yeah. that we look at? Just so I mean, if we get so. And in fact, the Focus chicken on the people have looked at sort of what other cities are doing yeah. in Portland. Well, that's what I was thinking of, because if, you, if you're so focused and you come up with 12 chickens and you don't realize that nationally eight is the, is the number of chickens you should be you know, following and what are you doing. And, it's you know, really all like over the farm. Yeah. <laughs> you get a half a peck of chickens. Yeah. Oh. Look at New York and Portland, Oregon, see what they do. Well, I think the home right. business thing slightly is, less is just, I agree with Mark, a much more significant impact. That's where I should focus should be, first of all. Well, yeah, okay, so let's put that on. And we'll, well, that we can put out, and hopefully we can, we can vote it up or down on the 13th, but yeah. we can also just put an hour down for the discussion. To change. Although the way you guys worded it, it may actually have less of an impact because it seems like it's excluding a lot of chicken. You would need at least. Close quarters. Right, so you would need four feet, you have to be four foot in from the setback, and you need 20 feet from there, at least to the next structure. So. Yeah, the house is, mm. yeah, yeah, it's four feet in. Yeah, but it's 20, 20 foot. From it's the not 20 foot from the lot line. It's no, 20 foot from the coop. Right, that yeah. would probably well, exclude you, I, the way you said chickens from downtown, right? Feet. Oh, thing. Right. Almost exclusively. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. Unless you had a coop inside your condo. True. Well, your roof. You could put it on the roof. You could put it on the roof. Chickens on the roof. Chickens can't fly. Right. <laughs> you know, if you have a green roof like the bakery on State Street, chickens can fly. Thing right on the roof. Right? Yeah. Like, what is it? Hypothetically, yeah. go ahead. Quick Mark. question, just on the on the <clears> home <throat> business. What what if you're like right now? If you're Bob's computer repair, like Community was saying, and you make a ton of service calls a day, and you don't you have a little sign that's one foot square by your door. It says Bob's computer repair, but you have this giant van that's always parked in your driveway that says Bob's computer repair. How, would that violate the signage or the trip generation or the or is it, is it, is it truck? Signs on trucks are free. Okay. You're allowed to have, I think, one um, business vehicle parked, I think. I can't remember if it's one or two in a residential. Oh, that's a yeah, the plumber up my road does that already. What's that? The plumber up my road does that already. Oh, every plumber you see the right. phone calls. Yeah. 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 Ye
or, or stay But I'm saying if they use that as their, yeah. or if the band never used it, that's their song, really. Or, you know, I don't know how to. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's not a sign. But your point about, so if he, could, if he comes back more than seven times a day, is that because he's service oriented, so he's always back. I mean, maybe he's just one guy, but he's always in and out, yeah. in and out. Right? But that would fit with trips. I mean, trips include the, the uh, business owner as well as the client. Right, so it might actually crimp yeah. existing by right. That's what I'm saying, right? It could oh, be okay. go the other way. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, that's a good question. What if you're a plumber and you're going to call at 2 in the morning and you're going to jump in your truck, but we say you can't do a trip until between 7 and 8 p.m.? Or well, you're at 24 trips for that week. Yeah. Well, doesn't it say you can't have people come to your house in that time? As opposed to making your hours of operation. If you're a plumber, how, how do you do that? Yeah, I'll fix your sink trap if you bring Just it in. Just bring it in. Okay. Yeah. And hours of operation must be between. And actually, that's, that, that's an interesting your point. Your sewer line's backed up. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> 7 o'clock. Uh, that's an interesting question. <clears throat> oh, you're not really operating at your house. You can just get in your car and leave. Right, but you're a trip. You know, the fact that you're leaving and coming back coming there at 2 in the morning. Yeah, so those are some of the things. That's a good point. That's not over. That's I'm wondering if we're too deep into it, and if there's a national, or, or more recognized ordinance that deals with Well, but, but here's the other thing. The other thing is, though, if you do intend to do trips after 8, 8 p.m., the only thing you have to do is come to us to get a special permit, right. which you'd have to do today anyway to do any of this stuff. So. Not if you're a plumber that are just working at your house. Oh, you wouldn't. It's fine, right? Yeah. Well, actually, that's a good point. But just because you come home with a truck doesn't mean you have a small business at your house, a home business. Yeah. That's true. No. Right. So, so the fact that you're a plumber who has a truck and you're in and out of there ten times a day, your 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 house is not your place of business. You just have to be. But it could be, but it doesn't matter because as long as you're not seeing clients or you have employees at your house, then we don't count. That it's okay. You can do that. You're not. You're not in right. business. So that's yeah, kind of interesting. If you're running your, if your business name, as disruptive, and, right? Oh yeah. If your if your business address is your home, you can do that by right without it, as so long as you don't have other plumbers coming to meet you at your. So it's the employee <laughs> the employee issue of the client coming to see you. Is currently what the. Yeah. Ordinance read. So okay. you could, in that situation, if you you ran your plumbing business out of your house, you're by right right now. You don't have to worry. You can go back and forth however many times you want, middle of the night, whenever. So Bob's computer repair, he doesn't see anybody, but he makes 20 trips a day and brings back a computer with him every time. That's okay. Sean, will this still be okay? Well, not, I mean, I don't know. I it's think it's a good point. It's smart because it talks about trips and hours of operation. Oh, yeah, here it is. You know, trips it's generated by the home business from clients, employees, residential scale delivery. So the fact that. Oh, yeah. Right. So the owner doesn't count. Right. Was your client demand? Plumbers <laughs> category? Right. So it's not by other people coming to your house. Right. Yeah. So, okay. right. I haven't looked at this for a while, so yeah. the, the nuance, but it's well, it important. Like I think that's going to come up. Yeah. Well, no, but that, this is what we spend all, you know, right. it's like King Street. We spend most of our time on one thing of King Street, which is that buffer and the sidewalk. Um, all the stuff on King Street and out of all the things in the Salmo business, we spend most of our time talking about traffic, trips, enforcement, and measurement. And then Nelson and I are just changed that whole buffer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Nelson and I are like a home business. Yeah. Uh, all right, so the 13th, we've got both of them. Yeah. Oh, both? Okay. Yeah, we're going to do one formally, one. One formally, yeah. hopefully, you can vote on, okay. and one just an informal Continue. discussion. Any other priorities for you guys? Well, the other thing you have on here is other OPD items, cluster and map changes. And this is kind of interesting with Wayne. Zealand, whenever it says other OPD things, uh, yeah. you could be here for hours. So, this is a test, Carol. Um, there's a satellite dish I'm going to wheel in. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few Scott. things from New Zealand. Scott. So, let's see, it's probably midnight, one o'clock there. Yeah, okay, right. Okay. Tomorrow. tomorrow. No, actually, it's, uh, it's probably tomorrow. It's actually like a good time. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, no, it is. That's only 14 hours. I think, yeah.
Yeah, we figured it was like 16 or something. So, um, so no. So the other items are on that list, you know, that chart, or there's a couple other things that have come up. So there's this um, issue with, you know, we've talked a little bit about the institutional changes, but at a staff level, we've talked about expanding the business district in, um, you know where the Florence Grammar School is? It's right next to, or right across the street from the Florence Mini Mall, which is zoned right now, neighborhood business. And then it also backs up to Nonatuck Street, where it's zoned special industrial. But the Florence um, Grammar School is currently being leased out. Originally, it was granted a permit to lease to nonprofits, um, so they're small businesses. But that's evolved over time. So the question has come arisen, does it make sense to just zone the school, bring it into either business zone or special industrial, because it really abuts those districts already. Um, and it's become an issue for the school, because the school is probably needs to, we need to do something with that building. It can't just sit vacant. And we've got leases in there. And they're, um, businesses that are sort of more startup businesses. That's where the Casa Latina is in the uh, I don't know actually okay. what tenants are. Is it the first sale? Is the building yeah. for the school department going to sell the building? No, we still want to maintain the um, building, but we don't, we'd like it occupied. Um, it's a, obviously it's a um, financial generator, uh, monetary generator, and, and um, <coughs> You know, it's provided so far sort of low rent space for startups or, or, or nonprofits that um, couldn't afford to be in a you know class, a higher class office space. Or something. Yeah, like Belfry, you know, Commonwealth Opera, uh, our course. Yeah. Park says, and the friends, the friend service. I didn't. Mean, I wasn't aware of that. Um, so, at, at any rate, that issue has come up, and so. You know, one of the things we talked about internally, I think, with the board, too, is whether or not it was sort of on that list going way back about looking at all the zoning districts. Does neighborhood business make sense anymore? Does it make sense in that location? Should it be general business? Or should we create a, you know, Florence business zone that's not quite like central business, but it, it has a little bit more general business type um, characteristics? And, and the reason why I suggest neighborhood business may not be um, effective there or in other places is it's very limiting on one hand, on the one hand because it doesn't allow certain types of uses like certain restaurant uses unless you get a special permit like that sandwich shop that came in for a special permit there a few months back um, so and given that location is it really you know the intent of what what's the intent of neighborhood business and and so there's that whole conversation about whether it should be zoned maybe it look at rezoning the Florence Mini Mall and then wrap in the school or just take the school and as an incremental step to rezoning. So that's one issue and then there's the cluster and then there's that whole chart that is the cluster. Cluster residential that you worked on with Joel a little bit. Oh, oh, oh.
Well, so do you guys have a recommendation, or do you need to do some discussion with the school department? Or the well, we've had, uh, we've had a discussion. I think ultimately a general business classification would be beneficial, probably more beneficial than special industrial, um, or neighbor, but then that would require probably the Florence Center to many more to be rezoned from neighborhood business up to general business, which isn't a huge leap, I think, from our context, it makes sense, but we need to have a broader discussion about it. Um, that's probably better than rezoning the um, school to special industrial. But that city buildings were exempt. Like, you can do anything that building because the city owns it. No, it's the use. Schools are exempt for use, but if businesses are using it, it's not exempt. Even if it's, it's, owned, by the, exempt. Even if it's owned by the city. Because, like, when, yeah. when you guys put the bridge over Main Street, you know, Wayne, I talked to Wayne about it. We didn't have to approve because the city put the bridge, you know, right up the bike path bridge. Yeah, but that's infrastructure. That's not no. That's not a tangent. Well, no, I, I, I guess it's sorry. <laughs> I just thought, what does it matter? If the city owns the building, what does it matter if it's zoned? If the city is zoned, it's not a city building. It's like water. We have to, we have to like, make sure we keep that. Should I just call that out? Yeah, you call it. Uh, well, so what do, you, do you want, is it something do you guys feel, do you need to do outreach or I mean, you feel, you know. Yeah, there needs to be outreach, but what, I guess what I'm saying is there's, there's so many zoning changes and then there's the whole residential issue. Do we want to start addressing the districts, A, B, and C? Meaning the pockets of yours, A, the middle of New York, B kind of thing? Or, or dimensional changes in it. Oh, the ZRC, yeah, one, the ZRC based. Yeah, all of that all discussion. That yeah. Or urban zone, period. Because so far we've only addressed sort of commercial right. issues. So, you know, at some point we need to tackle residential, and that's a bigger qu equation. But do you want to do you want to put that as sort of your next big effort? Is that a priority for you guys? Well, the other thing that Wayne you had talked about was, you know, the, what are we going to do about the changes based on Clark School and Smith? Right, but we've Clark already gotten school. your authorization to plow ahead. Right, but you, when do you guys plan on coming back with that? In the fall. I yeah, think, so yeah. how many things can we have going on at any one time? Oh, that's a good point. So we're going to have to do the Clark, Clark School thing. thing and good time for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't. It's not accepted. I know. We're getting so ambitious all of a sudden. Well, that's why, one, that's why yeah, that's why I guess I'm worried about because. Um, I Is think there's going to be a housing boom soon. Again? A housing boom? Tangent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, well, let's, let's, so chickens, home occupation, we have the rezoning based on the sales of the, the large lots of the, the schools. Um, the I'd love to I think that's, well, I mean, that's, that's a, a big, big well, we shouldn't shy away from if we're going to tackle chickens, then we should tackle uh, the residential zone. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I've been talking about it for two years. So yeah. uh, you know, I was a little reluctant on my part. You can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm Kath, I mean, Carolyn, there were also <laughs> was, I got a million of them. <laughs> there were also, um, we still have King Street. So the next meeting we have uh, in September is King Street coming back to us. From city council? No, because oh. we're going to have a joint meeting with the um, uh, ordinance. ordinance uh, to talk about King Street. Oh. So we're not quite done with that. Then we have one meeting in September. Then the first meeting in October, we're going to do for chickens and home office. We have two meetings in September. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. We have one more meeting in September. Oh, and then, so we have the, yeah, the first one is on King Street. The second one, I'm not sure what's on the agenda for the second uh. Um, and then the first meeting in October will be the two things we talked about. Um, plus, we're going to get back at some point the Glendale Road subdivision. Uh, it's a Kensington Estates. Kensington Estates. Mm -hmm. That is the second September meeting, right? Did you say that? No, it's the first one. Okay. First. Oh, it's September. I think maybe this is the answer. But between now and that first meeting, we should do a little field trip to Kensington. Yeah. I think we do. I think we definitely, before the 8th of September, we have to do a field and walk that area. I think that's, that's, that's definite. Um, maybe we should wait until we get the plans. We'll get the plans at least a week ahead of time, Carolyn. Uh, I think 
Well, we'll get. I think you guys have to get them two weeks. Ahead. Yeah. Well, I, right. I we do. I'm just um, concerned because I haven't heard anything yet. About it. Because if you remember, uh, was everyone who who was not here for Kensington? Glendale Rose. Andrew. Reggie. Oh, there. Yeah. Kathy, you're here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The only meeting I missed was the last one. All right. So, if you remember, the, the big controversy with the neighbors was there were two places to put the driveway. Yeah. And then there was, on the far side of the Route 66 side, was the positions of those lots and the burn. There was a burn behind three of the lots to, to, to prevent the, to shed the water. Right. To shed the water down. So, I think it's definitely going to be worth it to take a walk out there. Mm -hmm. So it might be that that we sometime between the first and the eighth. Uh, most people. But then maybe we should use the second meeting in September, assuming we don't have what to agenda, to kind of prioritize what we want to do. Because uh, the other thing, this table, this table is uh, a whole bunch of other things that are uh, options as well. So I mean, we're still in this 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 state where we're not getting many permits. And so we, we do have time if we, if we want to take on the residential. Well, all these other zoning districts that we took on, we, we seem to take on in clumps, or you feed us special, you know, SI district, here, here are our thoughts, and we wouldn't re we discuss it at a meeting if time allowed, and then we'd have a couple questions from table for the next time, and then we'd look at, you know, different, different ones along the way, and then you know, 12 months later, we come to a consensus and we agree on push it through. Do, can we do the same thing with, with these residential zones? I don't know if there's an easier one or a harder one, or, or in addition to Clark's school, those buildings and so, so forth. Can we just, as time allows, based on what you think is the way we should look at them, or the low hanging fruit type thing, which you, you did us with the, the commercial zones, can't we just do that with the residential? And just, the thing about the dimensional changes that we're proposing for your A, B, and C is they're going to be controversial. Um, we haven't really, we have ideas, I'm not sure, they got, have gotten to the point where they've been written up in language, um, but they're the kind of things that I think are going to be, take a lot of education of the public on. Uh, because even though what most of the ideas are, are changes only to reflect what's currently there, the perception is that it's the change it's only is to make neighborhoods more dense. Right. And it's going to be a lot of education to make sure people don't get the wrong idea. Uh, so that's, it'll be a lot of outreach and a lot of, we'll have a lot of people here mm -hmm. who we're going to have to explain a lot of stuff to. So it's, and it's a big thing to get your head around. And it's a big change in zoning. It will be a, a really big change in terms of what you allow for development. So, I mean, I think that's, Maybe we do want to have that second meeting in September as our own little planning meeting to decide what our priorities are. Prioritize. And we can talk about those dimensions a little bit more because the only time I think you guys have seen it was when the ZRC was here uh, last month. And there wasn't a lot of time to really. We, uh, we didn't get into the details too much, but um, uh, it's a, it, I was on the group that came up with them, and it's an interesting idea. Um, but it, it is the kind of idea that's going to take people a little time to figure out. That, I think it's just going to take. Whenever we start it, it's going to take a long time to finish it. So right. I'm thinking just as time permits, just start the process. Just get into it. Well, um, I mean, what do people think about taking the second meeting in September then? To we know where we got the, the, the first meeting in October, we know we got chickens and housing. The second meeting in, in September, will Wayne be back from? Yeah, he's, he'll be back soon, actually, a couple of weeks. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, does that sound like? to try to prioritize all these things that we have <coughs> on the agenda? I mean, all these like, things we have? Yeah, so you mean, so for the second week in September, look at the residential... So look at all the things we have in the offer, trying to figure oh, okay. out which ones we want to do. Residential, I think it would probably help us prioritize this week, because have we finished looking at, we looked at King Street, but have we finished really at all the sort of official no, I mean, we haven't looked at anything in Florence or Con Street. Right, there's the Cons Pleasant. So are we ready to start the president? <laughs> 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 
Right. Well, I guess it depends on whether you feel like you guys want to do all commercial first, then do residential, or do a little, you know, work on commercial, then do some residential, you know. But in terms of consistency, you know, and creating something that makes sense city wide, city wide, wouldn't it be good to finish off one of those? Well, it depends on what you mean is finishing off, because there are commercial districts all over the city, so. Um, you know, we've had a lot of interest for years, even when we were doing the sustainability plan, for people wanting to convert existing, you know, 3,000 square foot homes that are 100 years old into three units, but the zoning doesn't allow it. So there's been that pressure, that request from different places, so that's a residential change, and we keep putting people off saying, it's coming, it's coming. Um, well, there's also, when we talk about the expansion of Central Business down Con Street, right. yeah. you know, that was another you know, and that's something we've been talking about for a long time as well. Right. Uh, so I think... So you want to use the sep second September meeting to sort of look at what's in the hopper and then what maybe the next priorities are. Is it residential? Is it more? Is it cons and pleasant? And maybe look at some of the details of the um, residential components? We can, and we can, yeah, I, I think we can look and start, we can do an overview of the dimensional changes so you guys get an idea. And one of the things Carol mentioned was, um, you know, this idea where if you convert a two family to one family, you can't go back to a two family again. It would solve that issue. Um, you know, these dimensional changes will make it so you can do that again. Um, so there, there definitely is some benefit. But the way we, the way it would be implemented is such a big change. Right. So. Did we evaluate? I wasn't here for the last meeting. Did we evaluate the ZRC in terms of whether it's a good model for continuing to address some of these? Issues or a, like a, a continuation adapted CRC, or is the planning board just going to do it for now? I know we can put that in the discussion for the second meeting in September as well, but um, no, we haven't had that conversation at all. So. I mean, the CRC focused in on some particular issues and accomplished a lot, but there's still so much more to do, and do we need another entity like that to pick up on some of these issues? <coughs> Just restart with the same people. Huh? <laughs> CRC point two. <laughs> point zero. Point zero. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk see. about that on the twenty third. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I like how like it seemed as a group eighteen months ago. We said the commercial districts. We let's yes, let's focus in on those. And then you fed us. Yeah. Okay, tonight group we're going to talk about this zone and that. And so if we say in the end of September, yes, let's just jump into the residential and then you can feed us which ones. But what start she was feeding us was stuff that had gotten processed, a lot got processed by the ZRC. No, not the no, process of the yeah. I, I, thought it, I thought King Street was a big ZRC. Program. King Street, but all yeah. the stuff we did. All the other stuff, they were talking about chickens stuff. while we were focusing yeah. in on yeah. all that. Yeah. Are those, have all those tables been approved by the city councilman? So thir next Thursday, the 18th, central business is going forward. Um, but office industrial, GI, that all went, water supply protection, that's all adopted. Flood, forest, river. Yeah. That's all done? Yeah. That's good. Um, so next Thursday is planned village and central business. And then we have the rest of the King Street package. Um, and actually, I just posted the final layout. I did some modifications. Um, to the layout um, and have sort of a separate design packet for highway business. And I posted that on the front page of the OPD website, so it's there. Um, it's going to be introduced to council next week, and then it will be referred out for, public, for the public hearing. So Is there any chance the council would refer it out? No. Um, so we have, so the, the agenda for the next meeting, joint planning, the joint meeting with uh, ordinance and to the state if they come through. Anything else or is it? Um, oh, <clears throat> a cell tower? No, we've got the, the at Smith Boat. No, this is a brand new cell tower. Oh, not an addition to Um, At the Smith Boat Forest by the VA. We have a, um, a lease agreement, city land, so okay. the tower it needs a special permit for the planning board. The, um, this tower company has entered into a lease agreement with the city for a long-term lease of the land. Where by the VA? Where? It's way back in the woods. Um, uh, it, you enter it, across the Yeah, yes. there's, there's a little yeah. road that yeah. goes up there. There's like a forestry Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, Smith yeah, it's kind of, kind of neat back there. Yeah, it's a place to go. 
part of it is just, um, I mean, you'll hear this next time, but the, there used to be one, uh, a pad, a cell pad on a VA water tank, and the, v, and the tank's coming down. So, <laughs> hence the cell pad is coming down, so they need. The big blue tank on the top of the hill is coming down? Huh. What? <laughs> Are we ever going to hear, uh, so we're not going to have anything to do with things about the VA if they do that development up there? That's outside our jurisdiction. It's in your jurisdiction. It is. That's what I thought. It was on federal land. It's, a, it's not the land. Again, well, traditionally, it doesn't matter if it's on federal land. It's being run by a nonprofit. So it's not owned by the federal government, the, the housing itself. So therefore, it requires permits. Um, I was told by the consultant who's working to build this for the nonprofit that federal, special federal le legislation went through um, for this type of housing that says that, you know, if you get any uh, negative feedback from local governments, you can override them. <laughs> I haven't seen the legislation, but that's what I've been told. Is, so. is that the soldier on? Is that the nonprofit? Um, I think Soldier On is going to take it, but there's another nonprofit oh. entity that's done this elsewhere that may be partnering with Soldier On. I forget how it's all broken down, but yeah, it's basically going to be run by Soldier On. But um, so I, you know, that's going to be coming forward too as a permit sometime because they want to get those housing units in there quickly. Uh, all right, so 20, 23rd of September, we'll have priority meeting to try to figure out what we're going to do. Um, okay. Any other things? Anybody got any? I really I, like this new idea. Tangent. Yeah, yeah, I know, that's a good. Yeah, can we make a motion to make that a... Can we add that to our yeah. motion? <laughs> it should just like, it should just be like this, so yeah. it's discreet. Or everybody, right. get, everybody right. just get a big letter T, a red letter well, we T. Have, just hold it up. We got to assign somebody with a T every, yeah, every yeah. week, somebody's the tangent. Yeah, right. And it should be used with some discretion. Oh, of course. Well, there also is. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> we it was very rarely used. We used at the city council. It was very rarely used at school committee. It was on school committee. It's a, a Roberts rule of thingies where you can say, "Call the call the question." question. Mm -hmm. Oh. And that, so right. if somebody says, "I call the question," if I recognize Jen, she says, "I call the question." The debate's over. It's right. And you have to vote. Right. So it's a it's a it's a, uh, uh, a hard tangent. It's a very hard tangent. Yeah, it's a little tangent. aggressive. It is. It's very rarely used, but um, sometimes at like eleven o'clock in the morning, call the question. <laughs> I move we adjourn. I second. Any discussion? Yeah. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.